The work in brand never really ends. There's always a way that your brand can connect with consumers and it, it doesn't just happen in, during the nine to five that you would be required to work. There's always a way that you can take your brand to a new place to really build a new set of connect emotional connections with potential consumers. A lot of the work that I am most proud of, honestly, was something that I just came up with out of the blue or found a passion point around. I was up one night and I just thought, hey, this influencer, or this athlete really works well for our brand. It has the same sort of brand attributes as us. Why don't we find a way to work with them? And then I take that back to work the next day and say, here, here's my idea. I think we should do this. It's this career in brand is really a creative one. It's finding a balance between, again, the science aspects of how do you actually grow a brand to also grow a company, and obviously that comes through monetarily and revenue um, and new users, but also how do you build deeper connections and entrench yourself so that when you do capture a new consumer, they're there with you for life. I think the biggest mistake I see these days that brand makes is honestly in being inauthentic. And authenticity, I think, continues to be something that consumers are demanding of brands. Especially in this day and age where we have all the information in the world at our fingertips, brands can do the research They can, and consumers can be discerning and find out the information they need. So when I see brands that potentially have a connection with a celebrity, that doesn't quite make sense. Let's say a, a, a cheap car brand, a small car brand is partnering with a celebrity that is always driving a really nice sports car. Well, why does that make sense? That's not an authentic connection. Let me take a, an example for Spotify. What if we started working with people that had no connection to music whatsoever? Is that really authentic? A consumer sees a lot of brands these days talk about being sort of environmentally friendly, but then you also think like, well, are companies doing that? And you see that their carbon footprint is not being reduced, then we are discerning. Consumers know and understand this. So the biggest mistakes I believe brands make are when they're being inauthentic and not true to who they are, their product or their service. Identifying your target audience is one of the most crucial steps in, brand, in building your brand. Um, of course, there are a number of things you can do to sort of make sure you do that. The first, honestly, is going out and doing user interviews, user research. Go out there, ask people. If you have a product, if you are building a clothing company, go out to people that you think would wear your company or you want them to wear it and ask them, it, does, this, does this brand matter to them? Does it look appealing to them? Do they care about it? And if they don't, then obviously go back to the drawing board and try to find a way to reformulate your brand so that it will appeal to your target audience. Then make sure once you do have your products in place, make sure you go out to a random group of, of your potentially a target audience and see if you actually resonate with those members. We do a ton of consumer research on the creative that we put out in our campaigns at Spotify, where we are upfront testing the concept. Then once we have the creative in place, we actually go out and take a piece of creative and put it in front of a randomized set of, you, of users that would be the target audience, so say 25 to sort of 35. In our, in our geographies that we wanna to go to, and we see if it resonates. And if it doesn't, we go back to the drawing board and we reevaluate our creative until we are sure that it is going to deliver on the KPIs that we have set. Another element that any great brand marketer will care about is their brand consistency. It's ensuring that in your consumers' hearts and minds, their understanding of your brand is consistent from the start to the finish. And it doesn't erode, because that is a big piece. You've, we've seen numbers of brands that don't really care about continually making sure that the luxury, the premium elements of their brand are there. And over time, they, they kind of erode in our hearts and minds as consumers. We don't see them as the same sort of premium brands. So it's really important that as a brand and as a brand marketer, you are tasking yourself with making sure that your brand is consistently the same in the hearts and minds of your consumers. One way I do that is I look at our user research on an annual basis and I see if there are users that we go to and we are, are polling in our research are saying the same things that are about our brands. You know, a year or two years ago, they were saying that Spotify is their favorite music streaming brand. We'll say in two years, they start saying, ah, it's our second favorite. I have to start to care as a brand marketer. I need to make sure that we are doing things so that they have the same connection and we are satisfying their need for their music streaming. One part of this course where, that we're gonna focus on is looking at brand measurement. And it's looking in the first place, it's putting together the right set of KPIs, objectives for your brand to understand how you're actually building the brand in the heart and minds of your consumers. There are a couple key elements that I sort of look at. The first is awareness, and that's just generalized are people aware of your brand? 
Obviously, as a brand marketer, I hope that number is always constantly growing, but at some point you do hit a plateau. So the second piece that I look at is consideration. Do people consider your brands? Yes, they're aware of you, but are, is your brand the first that they consider when they are looking for your product or your product set? The third sort of set is when you go into the digging into how do people react and perceive your brand? A big piece of that is what we as marketers call brand love. So is there brand love, loyalty to your brand? Do people really believe that your brand is one that they have a connection to? And that's one that we track at Spotify on an annual basis. We actually do it quarterly. So I'm able to see on a quarterly basis if our generalized population, our users and non-users, believe, are aware of our brand, but also love our brand. And obviously once it starts to fall down, that's when I start to get concerned. And what can we do to repair those, those elements? Um, so those are some of the metrics we'll look into, but we'll also dive into channel specific metrics. So when you have a brand campaign and social media, what should you be looking at? engagement, sort of perception. Again, is it positive or is it negative? How do people perceive your brand sentiment? Those are the things that will come up in our in our class and we are gonna explore in depth. My biggest piece of advice to anyone interested in entering a field, the field of branding and marketing um, and really looking to build your career here is honestly to find the brands that matter to you personally. I think the times I've been unmotivated in my career um, and potentially found myself not quite into the work I was doing was when I was working on, a, on brands that didn't, didn't satisfy my own personal passion. Um, so I believe it's truly down to finding brands that you yourself connect to emotionally and figuring out how you believe you can really deliver value to that brand. How can you take that brand to a new place?